When people talk about time under tension, they're usually talking about one of two things. There is the time under tension of the individual rep or the tempo of the rep. And there is also the time under tension of a given set. Today we're going to focus on the individual rep. So if the time spent on the overall set is the same, which rep pace is going to build the most muscle? A nice even rep pace, maybe on the quicker side but still under control, or a slow deliberate rep with a four second negative, which is the down portion of the rep, and a four second concentric, which is the push or pull portion. So we're basically comparing an eight second rep to a two or three second rep. Some may think the slow deliberate rep would be the winner for sure. There are some advantages to doing reps slower. Sometimes when you're having trouble with that mind-muscle connection, slowing down the rep can really help you feel the muscle work. Or if your form has gotten sloppy, lightening up the weight and slowing down the rep and really focusing on form will protect you from injury and get you back on track to safely making progress. Now there's a trade-off here when we decide to do our reps slower. To illustrate, just think about one of your sets you do in your own workout right now. How much weight do you do and how many reps? Now imagine how many reps you could do if you did those reps at half the pace. There is no way you could move that same amount of weight for as many reps. So in order to keep the set length the same, you would have to lighten up the weight. Now because we made the length of the set the same, the time under tension is the same no matter what pace we do the rep. But one important variable did change, and that is the total volume of weight moved. The quicker paced reps would have moved a greater volume of weight. Now they did a study similar to this, except they kept the weight the same for both the very slow reps, which were done with a 10 second concentric and eccentric pace, and they compared this to the lifter's natural pace. Now these were experienced lifters who did these sets on separate days and they were tested in both the squat and the shoulder press, performing the reps to failure. They compared the force, power, and volume of both sets, with the results of all three being significantly lower in the very slow rep set, indicating that the volume done in a given set does make a difference. One of the studies that is often quoted supporting a slower rep pace is the one that involves leg extensions, with a slow rep being done at a 12 second pace and the fast reps being done at a 1 second pace. But the mistake they made is they took the slow reps to failure and just did the same number of reps on the quicker set, not bringing the quick set to failure. What was found is that the slower rep pace brought to failure produced greater protein synthesis than the quicker pace that didn't go to failure. Now this is no surprise. As we have long since known, training to failure or near to failure brings about the most muscle hypertrophy. So what is important in our working sets isn't so much the pace of the reps, but the intensity of the set, making sure we are pushing the set near to or to failure, using a natural pace, no need to go overly quick or super slow. As a matter of fact, as you come closer to the end of your set and closer to failure, your rep pace will slow down naturally, increasing the time under tension of those last few reps. But if you really want to build more muscle, you need to keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.